Julia, open. Hello. Hi, congratulations on the win. Uh, it was a pretty fast finish. Did you expect the fight to play out like that? You know, when I never expect finish fast, but uh, looking at my story, like how I'm fighting and so on, uh, you can always expect that. Uh, and uh, we was ready to fight all the three rounds. If we need to, we had the plan everywhere in striking, uh, on grappling, like how to do a whole fight. Like you never know how a fight is gonna f finish and it happens how it happens. <laughs> and uh, in this matchup, people were looking at it like you have the advantage on the ground. So were you surprised that she engaged with you in the ground and didn't try to get away quick? I just grabbed it. <laughs> oh, she tried, she tried. She actually, when I t uh, got to the uh, legs, like uh, for the takedown, she actually stood pretty good uh, posture and so on. So I just changed a little bit plan here, how to take her down. And uh, I did my job. Like, and, and of course, this is in her home country, a lot of attention on her and stuff. How did it feel to play kind of the upset role? Uh, and do you feel like now people are gonna start giving you more respect? You know, that's not, not the first time when I'm fighting in a fight where is everything prepared for my opponent. And uh, the best fight that I fought in my career was prepared for my opponent. And this is one of them. But uh, as I told already, this arena, it's not my enemy arena. It's my home arena also. And uh, I would love to fight in London more and more because I'm feeling here like at home. That's my home also, it's Europe, that's the closest city. It's, uh, like, uh, culturally, it's, there are a lot of Lithuanians, so we have Roger Gracie Academy here, I have a lot of people here who can come and cheer, and it's, it's so close to Lithuania, so people, really easy to come here to watch my fights. And uh, if I will be successful in that division, in the later fights, it's gonna be more and more Lithuanian audience here, and I really hope to fight here again, for sure. And uh, media day, you told me you feel like Flyweight will show your best version. I know it was a pretty quick fight, but physically, how did you feel competing at Flyweight? I love myself in the Flyweight. <laughs> I love it. I love how like my body is moving in Flyweight. I'm, it's it, it's better. <laughs> that's, that's better for sure for me. And uh, do you have uh, kind of a date or an opponent in mind for what you would like next? I don't care. I never choose my opponents. Whatever you see was bringing me, I always said yes. I never said no to any fight. And uh, I'm not gonna do it again later. I will say yes for anybody. And uh, one more for me, is it safe to say flyweight is your permanent home now? Yes, I'm not coming back uh, to bantamweight and uh, for, for featherweight for sure. <laughs> no, flyweight and only flyweight, that's it. That's my home. All right. Thank you. you did just Thank say. you. Are there any flyweights that you see in the division that you feel you match up well with? I don't care. I, I'm not looking like that, so like, it's, it's up to UFC. My, my work is to fight. Whatever they bring me, I'm fine with everything. And the title fight is coming up soon with Alexa Grosso and Valentina Shevchenko, the rematch. How do you think that goes down? I'm a big fan of Shevchenko. So I, I think she's gonna bring her belt uh, back, but I like Grosso also. She has a very good boxing and uh, everything can happen. But uh, yeah, I'm a fan of Shevchenko. <laughs> Congrats on the win. Thank you. Julia, hi. Yeah. Um, a lot of the narrative going into this fight was the weight cut, the weight cut, the weight cut. Do you feel now that all of those questions can be put behind you for good now? You've, you've proved everything you need to prove. You've made the weight, you had a great performance. That's it done, no more questions about weight cuts from now on. I hope so. <laughs> I cut it weight not even to 126, it was 125, so it cannot be questions anymore. Absolutely. And what, what were the major differences that you made for this fight in terms of preparing for the weight cut? Was there anything different uh, nutritionally or, or different in the training to prepare for cutting those extra 10 pounds? Um, my conditioning coach, he changed my conditioning a bit. So we did some extra work to make my body lose weight more. And uh, uh, the preparation for, this uh, for flyweight was not like in two, three months. It was a work for 10 months. I was working for 10 months to be in that fight. And uh, also we uh, have a specialist to help me with my uh, um, 
uh, with my supplements, uh, how to use it and so on. That, so that boosted my metabolism faster. So yeah, something like that. Do you think going forward then, in order to prepare for those weight cuts and stuff, do you, do you need to have uh, big periods of time between fights or do you think you can be quite active throughout a year? I think with the time, I can be very active. Uh, but right now it's the very first uh, weight cut for me so big, so uh, I think I will need some time to recover for sure. But uh, later with my career, I can be very active and I like to be an active fighter. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Julia, over to your left. Yeah. Oh, yeah I think that was your 10th armbar finish in your career. What makes the <laughs> perfect armbar finish and how are you able to be so successful with that technique when everybody knows that that's what you're going for? Don't prepare that. <laughs> I, I'm not preparing for armbar. I never drill armbar anymore. We stopped drilling it when I was a blue belt. <laughs> it just comes to me. It's natural for me. Do you think you have the most dangerous armbar in the UFC? Maybe. Thank you very much. They actually all came in the first round as well. So are you thinking of changing your nickname maybe to the arm, armbar queen or something? <laughs> I'll, I would like people to learn how to spell my name and surname. <laughs> Thank you.